can be pretty overwhelming with all the thousands of whiskies available online. So I'm Phil and I'm gonna fill you in about how to build the ultimate whiskey collection. So don't worry, we, we will go through all this. So I've had so many of you message me on Instagram saying, I'm gonna buy another whiskey. I'm sort of into whiskey already. I got a few bottles, you know, what should I buy next? And I think the first thing about building a whiskey collection is variety. I'm a big fan of exploring. That's what the whole whale means in my logo. That whale goes down to the depths of the ocean, into the darkness, exploring the unknown. And I think that's one of the most fun parts about whiskey. It's about what you don't know, which whiskey you try next. And the other good thing about variety, it means you have whiskeys that are for different moods for different seasons. Maybe you have visitors who don't know much about whiskey or maybe you have visitors who know a lot about whiskey. However, this is a subjective template. You know, if you want to build a collection of just Springbanks or McAllen's or Ardbeg's, you know, go for it. It's your money. But I just want to give you some options about different ways you can build that collection. So the first whiskey I'd have in my whiskey collection is a great entry level gateway whiskey. <laughs> Even if you're really into whiskey, I think it's always still good to have a good beginner whiskey on the shelf, just in case someone's coming around, they don't know much about whiskey, and you want something that's gonna be smooth and approachable, and maybe even works quite well on a cocktail. And all of these fit that category perfectly. They're all known as those sort of smooth gateway whiskeys. They're all bottled at 40%. And I've got kind of the three sides of scotch here. This one here is mainly from ex bourbon casks, the Glenlivet 12. It's a really nice, approachable, multi white fruit sort of flavoured whiskey. And this one here is a bit more the sweeter side of scotch, has a lot more of that sherry cask influence. And that's the Avalor 12. And then I've got the Lafroy 10, which introduces you to the smoky side of scotch. This is actually the whiskey that got me into whiskey. But when people get into whiskey, there's lots of different roads you can go down. <laughs> Some people go through the more classic scotch door, some people go through the sweeter door, and some people go through the smoky door. So this video is brought to you by Into the AM. And you might have noticed this t-shirt I've been wearing with this cool octopus and this giant barrel whiskey. And that's what Into the AM do. They make high quality, premium apparel. And what I really like about them is just how high quality the t-shirts actually are. In fact, I'd probably say this is probably the highest quality t-shirts I actually own. It just feels real nice, like the fabric, fits really well. And also I really like the designs of the t-shirts. They're just super interesting. They're made up by all these super creative artists, but they do have a massive selection of colorful custom designs. So there's something for everyone. And I'm a big fan of minimalism and they've covered that well with branded basics, which, you know, are just great for everyday use. So if you like all that, they're actually running a really good bundle deal at the moment. So you can get three graphic tees for $60 or you can get three branded basic tees for $49.95. On top of all that though, you can get an additional 10% off these comfortable t-shirts using the discount link below. So I think this next group of bottles is gonna be well suited for the vast majority of you who are watching this video. You know, they're whiskies with a little bit more punch, but I also think this is where you're gonna find really good value whiskey. Also, this is gonna hit the three big criteria for whiskey geeks, well, most of them all. Unchill filtered, where they haven't taken oils out of the whiskey natural color and bottled at around 46%. So I don't really like to categorize whiskey in terms of regions because I think there's just too many exceptions, but I think a great way to categorize whiskey is in terms of flavor. So let's go to bottle two. So I think an essential part of any whiskey lover's collection should be a great ex-bourbon cask style of whiskey. Now I'm a big fan of all three of these. I've talked heaps about these two on my channel, but I'm also a big fan of the Altmore 12. And they all have this lovely straw color. And I think don't be afraid of whiskeys that are this color. I think a lot of people who are getting into whiskey think, you know, oh, nice darker color means that it must be much more richer whiskey. And that's not true at all. All three of these are very complex. These are all gonna give you those really nice multi notes those vanilla notes and a lot of those white fruit notes as well. So I think the next essential whiskey for any whiskey lovers collection is having a great ex sherry cask style of whiskey. And I've done a really in depth whiskey about all this if you wanna go into that. But basically it's just whiskeys that have been aged in sherry soaked wood and it's gonna give you those flavors like nutty, dried fruit notes and spice notes. This one here, the Tandu 12, is aged exclusively in ex sherry cask. And this one here, the Boonhaven 12, it isn't aged exclusively in ex sherry casks, but it definitely is an ex sherry cask style of whiskey and a lot of people absolutely love this whiskey. 
For the fourth bottle, you should probably have in your whiskey collection is a great peaty and smoky whiskey. Now this category is not really for everyone, it's quite a divisive category, some people just absolutely love it. And some people don't like it at all. <coughs> but I think it's worth trying. These three, I'm a big fan of. My favorite is probably the Port Charlotte, but it's also the most expensive. Uh, Le Chade's a little bit of an underrated whiskey, and the Ardbeg is a really famous classic Isla Scotch. If you want a whiskey that's kind of combines this category and the last category, they actually are great sherried smoky whiskies as well. Like this one here, Kilhoman Loch Gorm. There's also the Kilhoman Sinead, which is a little bit more of a cheap option than this. So I think the fifth bottle that should be in your whiskey collection is a great car strength whiskey. So these are whiskies that haven't been watered down before they've been bottled. So, you know, with most whiskies that are bottled at 46% to 40%, they actually add water to them to get them down to those strengths. These ones, they haven't done that. They're gonna be very punchy and full flavored as a result. So this one here, the Ardbeg Ugadal, it's a really punchy, smoky whiskey. It's bottled at 54.2%. This one here is a Campbelltown whiskey called the Glen Scotia Victoriana. It's bottled at 54.2%. And this one here is the Glen Goyne Cast Strength bottled at 59.8%. So sometimes you're just feeling like a really punchy, full flavored whiskey. And that's what this category is. So now onto the more advanced section of this video. So I think for the majority of you, especially those of you who are on a budget, if you just had one of each of the first five categories, that'd be a great start to your whiskey collection. But some of you have been drinking whiskey a little longer, some of you might have a little bit more money because these whiskeys are going to be more expensive. So what I do recommend for these next whiskeys, find some whiskey friends, do some sample swaps, you know, like try whiskeys before you splash out heaps of money. So I don't really know what to call this category, so maybe like a funky sort of challenging category. And I think the Springbank 12 hits that really well. It's rugged, it's sharp, takes a while to get to know, but it's also quite a hard whiskey to find. So I do think there are actually some good alternatives to the Springbank because it's becoming sort of the holy grail whiskey for whiskey geeks and people are willing to pay a lot of money for it. So a good one is the Ben Romick 15, much better value. Also very characterful whiskey. There's also a car strength one, and these are both that sort of bitter, lots of personality. And another good one is the Craig Ellicke 13. So this category is definitely personal preference kind of category. It's a bit like the Peter whiskeys. Some people really do not like the style of whiskey and some people absolutely love it. But what I do find to be a common story among people who are into whiskey is they start off not liking this whiskey and it ends up being their favorite style of whiskey. So I think the seventh bottle of whiskey you could potentially have in your whiskey collection are whiskies that explore the terroir side of scotch. Whiskies that explore yeast types or barley types. This one's a great example of that. It's the Brutic Laddie Isla Barley and it uses a different style of barley than most other scotches. And it's really interesting. It's kind of a real farmy direction. I think this is an interesting road to go down. So the two really common cask types in scotch are the ex sherry cask and the ex-bourbon cask. But as you go down your whiskey journey, it's fun to explore other style of casks, especially ex-wine casks. Here we've got a whiskey, a Glenallachy, that's aged in Rioja cask, which is a, from a Spanish wine. This one here is the Port Charlotte Pack or PAC, which is in Paul Yak cask, which is from Bordeaux. And this one here is a Kilhoman, which is aged in a Madeira cask. All of these go in kind of quite different directions, but I think the category of having something that's just a little bit different from your average scotch. Okay, so the ninth type of whiskey I think will be great for a whiskey collection is something a little older. So I've got three here. They're slightly older than your average whiskey, but you're probably thinking, None of these are like 21 years old or 25 years old or 30 years old. Why have you chosen two 18 year olds and one 16 year old? And this is where the law of diminishing returns really comes into play. With age, as things get aged in casks over time, often the price will go up because it's expensive to store that whiskey in those casks or the whiskey becomes more rare, not because the whiskey is actually better and better tasting. And I think that sort of 16 to 18 year old for older whiskey is a really good sweet spot. This 18 year old Aaron, I think is a great example. I actually prefer this to the 21 year old. This Anok 18 is fantastic. I think this is also the sweet spot for Anok. And this Longmorn 16, even though it's 16 years old, is just a really 
really good whiskey. The modern long morn 16s don't come in this sort of green bottle, they come in like a purplish sort of bottle, but to be honest, they're also really good. It's always good to have a whiskey in your collection that's, that's slightly nicer, that you've spent a little bit more money on, and you know it really is gonna be a special treat for you and whoever you're sharing it with. <laughs> If you do like watch a lot of channels on YouTube about whiskey, you probably would have realized that it actually divides into two camps. There are a lot of channels that review and talk about single malt whiskies and mainly scotch, and then a lot of channels that talk about bourbon. And I do think if you're in the scotch single malt camp like me and my channel, you still should have some great bourbons on your shelf and it definitely goes both ways. Okay, so the thing about bourbon is for people outside the United States, it can actually be pretty hard to get your hands on good bourbon. And that's because the United States don't really need to care about exporting great bourbon. So often all we can get is Jim Beam and Jack Daniels and that sort of thing. But I have three bottles here that I do recommend that I have been able to find in New Zealand. So one is the Wild Turkey 101. It's a very popular bourbon. 101 means the proof and it's bottled at 50.5%. I think if you're into scotch and you're into single malt, I think skip the light bourbons and go straight to the punchy stuff. And this one is even more punchy. It's also from Wild Turkey. It's called the Wild Turkey Rare Breed and it's bottled at 58.4%. And if you've got a little bit more money to spend, I also recommend the Elijah Craig. This one's bottled at 68.3%, very powerful. It's highly recommended on bourbon YouTube channels and that sort of thing. And it comes out in batches throughout the years, like different versions of it, but it's more expensive. <laughs> Okay, so aside from bourbon, I do think it's good to have some other world whiskies in your collection as well. So this is probably where I talk about Japanese whiskey, but there's this whole thing where basically it's become really expensive and hard to get. That is gonna change in the next few years, but at the moment, I'm not really seeing great value for money, but there are some other good non-Scotch whiskies as well, especially from Ireland. So I've got two here, one is the Yellow Spot, 12 year old, it's bottled at 46%, and the other is the Red Breast 15, and it's bottled at 46%. If you're into good Scotch whiskies, you will probably like these. These are great single pot still whiskies. But it's not just Ireland, there are some great English whiskies now. Like I'm a big fan of the Scotswolds, Odyssey Barley. Okay, so the 12th bottle I think you should have in your whiskey collection is that you're supporting something local and there's two distilleries in New Zealand I'm a big supporter of and I just love their whiskies. One is Waheke Whiskey, which are fantastic, and the other is Cadrona. Big fan of them as well. Really cool location if you ever visit New Zealand but also maybe somewhere local where you are. I had a guy on Patreon, Daniel Williams, you're a first fill friend. And he sent me this whiskey here, which is the clay whiskey. So this is a three year old whiskey, but it's probably the best three year old whiskey we've ever had. So if you're Dutch and you get your hands on this, I definitely think you should try it out. So I know I talked about how Springbank is a really hard whiskey to find, but I think if your whiskey collection has got to this point and you're getting pretty experienced with whiskey, it is probably time to try and get your hands on a Springbank at some point, explore why a lot of whiskey geeks really like it. Okay, so the 14th bottle that I think should be in your collection would be an independent bottling. And this is where it starts to get very geeky. So if you already own a lot of bottlings, a lot of standard bottlings from distilleries, there actually are companies that buy casks directly from the distilleries and bottle it under their own name. So this one here is a Douglas Lang, this one here is a Signature Vintage, and this one here is called Compass Box. It's not just about single cask, they actually buy multiple casks from different distilleries and make their own blend in their own unique new whiskey. This is a really interesting road to go down. It's one of those roads that you never truly learn because it's just so many different independent bottlings. It definitely is next level stuff. So the 15th and final bottle I think will work great in your collection would be a great luxury bottling. Now these are whiskies I wouldn't really recommend having many of because they're sort of for those really special occasions. The Glenmorangie Signet is a great example of this. Great whiskey, very expensive, but the presentation, opening this up on a special occasion with friends and family, I think this bottle does that job really well. I've got some others as well, the Ben Romick 21. You could almost put Octomore in this category. It is very expensive for what it is, but it's a very unique whiskey. And that's kind of what this is about. It's kind of the story the whiskeys tell, not so much how good the whiskeys are or 
how cheap they are. So just to note, you don't need to go out and buy all these whiskeys all at once. I recommend just taking it one at a time, trying this category and trying a different category. The good thing about whiskey is it doesn't actually go off because of the high bottling strength. So you can build the collection up over years, if not, decades. And the key thing as well is to buy whiskies you like to drink. Some of you won't really like the Campbelltown funky whiskies and some of you won't like the peated whiskies. So if you like this video, give the video a like. If you want to learn more about whiskey, subscribe. And also, what would you have in your 15 bottles to build your collection? Write a comment down below. And thanks to my patrons for making this video possible. And above all, share and enjoy. Beauty.